What's up, everybody? Special presentation tonight. We have Marlon with us tonight from The Challenge, a.k.a. Black Zeus. Check out his intro video. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, Marlon is here with us tonight. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good, Marlon? What's good, man? Uh man, you know, I'm just chilling. I've obviously just, just got done watching the, the new uh episode. So uh, yeah. you know, just at the crib. Same old, same old. Go. What's, what's good with y'all? Good, man. Mm -hmm. Doing good. Not much. I actually uh just caught the end of it uh as well. So oh swag. And this, yeah. this this episode was crazy. I I, uh, I unfortunately I just got off of work, so I haven't been able to watch it yet. So oh, I, okay. I ain't gonna spoilers. I ain't gonna say anything, but hey, it's it's a good one, bro. It's good. A good I can't one. wait. I can't wait. I I mean, after last week's craziness with Ashley coming back in, you know, we we had her on. I, I don't know if you did that out or not, Marlon, but we had her on a couple weeks ago. She was telling us that she was coming on. She's coming back on the show. Or last week was it was last week. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's it's a lot of, a lot of twists and turns this season. It seems like, dude. I mean, I I really feel like this is probably one of the best formats that they've had like in a long time. Agree. Um, um, just for show and like doing it. I mean, they need to do, they need to do double agents like five, six, seven times. Right? <laughs> yeah. But then they pick the best cast, bro. I mean, when 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 have we ever seen rookies come out swinging like that? You know what I mean? Like first yeah, episode out true. the gate, rookies was like, "Oh, we're new. I can't tell. I'm sorry." Like you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, it was just this. This is probably one of my most. Uh, I've been well entertained from episode one all the way up until now. Like this has been a very, very good season. I agree, man. I definitely agree with you. But uh, before we get into that, everybody check out the bottom of the ticker. Uh, you know, finalists on Rivals Two uh, had a daily win with Jordan. Two elimination victories and a total earnings of eight grand. Uh, my man, I, I'm let's let's just get into it. I mean, my brother and I are huge fans of yours. Oh, we need you back on, man. We need you back on. We don't understand what the issue is. It's one of our questions we had for you tonight. What 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 happened? Bro, I don't know, bro. Like, I'm starting to think that like I'm starting to think maybe I pissed somebody off up the food chain. <laughs> it's just like, you know. He needs to cast another season of challenge. What do you guys think about Marlon? No, no, no. F that guy. No, not gonna happen. Next. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Or, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I say this a lot, but it's just like if you look at athletic ability, and if you look at like proven athletic ability, I don't think anybody has ever done a challenge that has had such a high level um, of actual proven athletic ability as I have. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't understand that when I did Rivals 2, I was at my worst as far as um, being in shape, just life. You know, I had a lot of things going on behind the scenes that I wasn't really talking about, but I was literally at my worst when I did uh, Rivals 2. So I think a lot of people have seen me kind of resurface on the map mm -hmm. now, and they're seeing the new me, and it's kind of like, you know, who can we really put this guy against and be a real a, a, something that people really want to see competitively? Because if you put me on a challenge, the thing that people are going to want to see me do is to compete physically. Like, right. I mean, everybody knows that like there's puzzles and all that stuff, but I will be brought in there for that physical aspect. But if you look at me compared to a lot of these other guys, I don't think anybody would really honestly put their money on anybody against me physically. So, I think that's a part of the aspect no. too. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, so especially like, now. Right? <laughs> I, you know what I'm like, I put you like this. Fessy is like six four, I think six five, two hundred and fifty pounds, right? Right. And he has a certain body style. Right. I'm six foot, two hundred and fifty five pounds, with a completely different body style. So you put me in there against these guys. It's it's you know. 
I don't know how they're gonna swing that. Basically, would it? But I does it ever come like with that being said, body types and and weight and all that? Would it guys like? And I don't mean no disrespect at all when I say it's like Zach and CT. W- would that line up with you at all physically? Because they get casted. It, it's it's it's. I would say the 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 bar is definitely there. Uh-huh. But I mean, you got to figure Zach. Zach's probably only really pushing like two fifteen. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay. and, and this is the thing. Y'all are looking at me. You know what I'm saying? Like on my social media and 250 off a cell phone and like, you know, mm. that type of thing. When you get on national television, you look about, you can look anywhere from eight to 10 pounds bigger. Okay. So understand like, you know what I'm saying? You're looking at me at 250 from my Instagram. I'm going to look to, I'm going to look Ronnie Coleman size on camera. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, okay, bro. He's the body <laughs> for real. He's not messing around. You know what I'm saying? But... I would say CT Zach. Um, um, I just got introduced to a guy named uh, uh, I got on the radar. A guy named CJ uh, Kogel. I think that's how you say his last name. Yeah, Kogel. Yeah. yeah. Um, Can't you know, uh, Obviously, Fessy's there, but he's kind of lost a little bit of clout with kind of how he performed against Nelson uh, in his hall bro. So there's some guys there that are potentially in my bracket, but when you put them against someone like myself who spent his entire athletic career with physical contact right. on a high level, bro. I played against Colin Kaepernick, Michael Orr, Robert Griffin, you know, Jordan Shipley, Sam Brad. I played during that era of football. Like, bro, I'm taking on 315 pound men every day, day in and day out. Exactly. My level of mentality when it comes to physical contact or physical ability, those guys haven't been there, you know, but. I don't know. I'm at this point. I'm like, look, I done pissed somebody off high up the food chain, and they're like, nah, we don't like him. We don't like him. Sit, let him stay at home. You know. We got Austin chiming in. At do you get calls at all? Uh, occasionally. You know what I mean? I mean, like, and, and, and I think I'm still on MTV's radar for whatever reason, just because I mean, I just did X on the beach. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um. So I I do believe 100. percent I'm still on the radar. I just I, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's like we don't I don't know if when they're looking at this they're like we don't know how he fits in. I don't know if they look at maybe they think I'm going to be too dominant, you know, competitively so it doesn't fit for making the show, you know, uh suspenseful. I, bro, I can't call it at this point. Man. I must I just think I pissed somebody off, you know. What or what do you remember uh Marlon what season you were the farthest in? When it comes to like you know being an alternate, or did you were, were you ever an alternate? Were you none of that? I don't know, man. Like, cause like, oh well, wow, rivals too. They called me pretty much every challenge after yeah. rivals too. They called me for availability calls for at least four or five, maybe challenges or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I was just trying to get my life together. I mean, I had a bunch of stuff going on just from you know. My living situation, I was in and out of jobs. And I was just like, bro, I got, you know, negative $35 in my account. You want me to hop on a plane and go halfway across the, you know, country and risk, you know, a situation with y'all. I was like, I, you know, I just can't do that right now. You know what I mean? And then one was bloodlines. And it's like my family timeline is so spread apart that like the only person in my family that would have done bloodlines was like 17 at the time. And then... Um the next person that up in my family was already like 38, you know what I mean, with arthritis. They were, they, <laughs> you know I mean? they're like pre-diabetic arthritis. They're like, ah, oh, I'm good. Like, you know what I, mean? so I was like, oh, I can't do this with guys. I, I, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, just a lot of things was going on that I couldn't just commit. Um, and then I would say after that, they just stopped calling and okay. um yeah i don't know okay all right well hey it's all good man I, i'm still hoping and praying that it will happen eventually one of these days i know my co-partner my partner daniel we've talked about it all the time where this would be such a different a different show if you were on these past you know eight to nine seasons i think you really would have had a good shot of winning this ship like you did in rivals too uh but i, I want to switch gears a little bit with you marlon a lot you know with the with the Joe Biden being served in today, I know you've been very vocal on your Twitter account about what's going on in the in, in our country and all that. Events yeah. after the events of State Capitol, which was a couple of weeks ago, 
what in your way, uh, because I've been asking people this lately, uh, can we come together as a nation? How can we unite in your words? Yeah, no, no. There's there's always an ability to come together, right? Because the dialogue Mm -hmm. has started and you can see in corporate America, you can see in politics, you can see in a lot of social settings, a lot of the status quo that was allowed to happen is now getting punished. You know what I mean? And I don't mean to say punished, but people are being held accountable. And I think that what's going to help us come together is having a leader that understands that that accountability needs to be cascaded across the board and everybody needs to get on board with it or you're getting kicked out. Because then, Mm. you know, someone who, whether they agree or don't agree, they're going to know like, well, I have to check myself and treat other people with respect, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Treat other people with kindness or whatever, empathy, whatever the case may be. Or if I don't agree with it, then I can't go over and negatively impact other people's lives because I'm going to be accountable for it. So now we have a leader in place that's going to say, look, I ain't tolerating it. I don't care if you're a corporation. I don't care if you're a politician. I don't care if you're, you know, Joe Blow, Smo, whatever. We have a status of accountability. And I think that that will start the dialogue of, being able to adequately educate people because a person is not going to be willing to listen to why they're wrong until they're, um, unfortunately, until they have to deal with the negative consequences of their actions. And I I think that we're at that point now in a society where people are willing to say, all right, this is wrong. We're not going to let it happen. You're going to deal with it. And now we're going to educate you on why you're in this position. And they're going to be more receptive. Because if you saw like all those social media people, like I think it was probably like, uh, I think it was like two years ago when the whole blackface thing came out and people started losing their jobs and people started. Oh, you know, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people don't understand it. Like that started a very pivotal dialogue that, that, um, you started seeing people like say, okay, I need to educate myself about why this is wrong. Mm. And now that I've educated myself and I can see the long history behind this, now I see why I shouldn't be doing this. And then it educated other people that may have not got caught or thought it was okay. And then, you know what I mean? So I think oh, yeah. we're at that state in the, as, a, as, a, as a society that it, it it's fingers crossed. I think we can definitely unite and be a better cohesive mm-hmm melting pot you know i agree i agree thank you man appreciate that you said um so Marla, how was it growing up with a military dad and being in the military type of family oh uh, very very strict you know a very it was a very you do things right the first time you know what i mean mm. um it was a very very uh structured upbringing um very strict i mean and, and i think anybody that's the military is kind of like accustomed to that but i think the, the the flip side of that is i get to move I've, I've been able to see you know other countries and other cultures and actually lived in those cultures you know mm-hmm. um so growing up as a military brat is just like the pros and cons you know you have that mentality of 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 not necessarily being perfect, but taking pride in the fact that I can get things done right the first time. Mm-hmm. I can follow directions. You can teach me something once or twice and I pick it up. And that, you know, gives you certain skills as an adult. Um, but then also to looking at the times that we're in now, I'm someone who's pretty cultured in a lot of different people's cultures and backgrounds. And it helps me have a dialogue that's a little bit different than everybody. And I feel like even now, a lot of people, people they reach out to me when I start getting vocal about some of these things they're like well why is this like this and then it's like I can break it down in a way that they can understand you know what I mean because I know I get get where they're coming from because you know maybe they're not African American or they're not Hispanic or Mm -hmm. they're not European so they don't their perception is different so I know how to meet them where they're at and say all right this is how you see it this is probably how you were raised but you missed this Mm. so it's helped I, I, I like how you broke that down because for me personally, you know, I've been, I, I was raised in a multicultural, you know, church and, and family and all that stuff. I was like, I was around Samoans and oh. African Americans and all that stuff. And so what, 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 how you just said, how you break things down from a different standpoint of a different race. My best friend is African American and I still 
even even I I went out and because I live in San Diego, we went out and did the protest, the peaceful protesting oh, for what? Black Lives Matter and all that. He had to break it down for me and, and it helped me understand even more of what the meaning is, not the organization, but just the meaning of the word. Right. So it, it, I love how you just how you just said that about yourself because that really helped me out as a as one of my friends helped me understand everything that was going on in a more deeper context. Oh yeah, and it's it's, it's I, and I think that like. I don't I don't know where like it started or whatever, but it's 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 we've gotten to a, such a polarized point that people never ever take that step of saying, Well, let me take 30 seconds to see it from your perspective before mm. I respond. Let yep. me take, you know, five minutes to read this article from your perspective without trying to prove you wrong, but just trying to understand you. And I think like the Black Lives Matter movement, I feel like got really, really hijacked because a lot of people couldn't separate the fact that there's Black Lives Matter, the organization, and then there's Black Lives Matter, the ideology. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people miss the fact that Black Lives Matter, the organization is being running run by human beings and people, and they have personal goals that they are implementing under that name but that doesn't necessarily coincide with the ideology of Black Lives Matter and what it actually encompasses for the people and the group. And that has been such a, a, a point missed because like for a while I was like, why don't people get it? Black Lives Matter, why don't people get it? And then I started understanding that there was this, there is this convoluted mix because people weren't separating the message from the group. Yep. And the group, Perfect. Hey, I can go on for days of things I don't agree <laughs> with, with the way they run in the show. Trust me, I will, like, oh, my God, like, I would probably roast a few of those guys if we got into an, a, a debate. But the 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 message and the ideology of Black Lives Matter is the big piece that I think needs to be the focus. Um, but, you know, it, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yes, sir. We are. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Marlon, for saying that. Um, uh, so, like I said, your religious background—you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm Christian. I'm, I'm Christian. Okay. Um, but, uh, so for you, I know that that was of your your life, and we saw a little bit of it in your um, season of Portland. Uh, how how has that formed you as a man and as a, as a human being in today's in today's life for you? Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily religious now, the same way okay. I was back then. Um, you know, I don't have like a denomination like that. Like I do 100% believe that there is a, um, a higher power or a higher purpose or a higher being that I guess you could say is looking out or maintaining balance, whatever the case may be. Right. I believe that hundred percent. What I have kind of gotten away from is some of the traditional ways that, um, religion, I feel, has manipulated people with fear. I've mm. tried to step away from the fear mindset in, in dealing with my connection to a higher purpose because I feel like it blocks you and it causes a lot of trauma. I mean, I really do think it causes a lot of trauma um, yeah. to some individuals. So now I'm just in a spot where, um, you know, I truly feel like I'm learning new things about, you know, my connection between myself and this higher being, but I don't know enough or I don't understand enough that I can really put a foundational like name or purpose or reason mm -hmm. behind it. Um, I'm still kind of searching for that for myself, but I, that the, the traditional structure of religion, I feel like things just aren't adding up in, in a lot of ways for me personally. So I had to kind of just go find something else. Um, just, you know. I like that. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't really, because I haven't really found it. So I can't really give you an exact thing, but I don't know. I, I know that there's something out there. I know that it has a purpose. I know that it, it loves all people. I know that um, it's accepting no matter what your background, gender, whatever the case, whatever. Um, but I, I just don't know how to put i guess a foundational name yeah you know on it you know what I, mean? no, I get what you're saying i get what you're saying yeah. so that's where i'm at with my you know religion and spirituality at this point 
Cool, man. Cool. Um, you know, I'm just gonna switch gears a little bit. Was Texas Texas Tech your first choice for yourself? And <laughs> and um and what like in your aspiring college football career, what what made you fall in love with football? Man, bro, like you know what's crazy? And and I've had this conversation with only with like a few of like my closest, closest, closest friends, but like um uh, I I hated football when I first started playing. Yeah, I kid you not. Really? I, bro, I hated football. Like, the, I, you want me to run down here and hit this person so hard that it hurts my body. And then you want me to show up tomorrow? Like, no. Are you, no. I was like, Dad, I'm quitting. Dad, no. This is not for me, Pops. I know you love football, Pops. Nah. nah I'm going to take up knitting or something, bro. I don't know. <laughs> Way less contact, right? Uh, oh man! Then, um, you know, I, I, you know, my dad like took me in the backyard. And he was just like wailing on me. He's like, "Run over here!" And he'd hit me, and I'm like, "I didn't hurt that bad." And I run over, and he hit me harder. And I was like, "Okay, I get this. It's not that bad. You get this." Yeah. And then I started playing running back, and I was pretty good. Um, I was got really, really good at at running back. And then I started loving the game. I started understanding like, oh crap! Mm-hmm. Like, you, then you start getting those bonds. Like it's like you start getting to that age where you start having like actual friend groups and like. So football gave me a lot of camaraderie, a lot of brotherhood. It taught me like working hard. It taught me, you know, the value of like your works and all that stuff. And that's when I kind of like fell in love with it. Um, did I want to go to Texas Tech uh, originally? No. Um, the other part of football is, is I hated playing defense, but I was really, really good at it. So I was just like, well, damn, you know, if I want to get the scholarship, you know, I got to keep tackling folks. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, it, yeah. I almost went to Vanderbilt because Vanderbilt was like, look, if you come here, we'll let oh. you, we'll let you just be an athlete. We're not going to put a position on you, um, or nothing like that. You just come here, whatever position you want to play, you can play. Um, and then I had like Oklahoma State offer me, Baylor offer me. Um, 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 were you were you a, were, were you a four star or five star recruit coming out of high school? Um, I was a four star. Four star. I was a four star recruit, but peep game. So y'all, I don't know. If, do they still do the Nike Spark Camp? I believe so. I think so. so. Yeah. Do they, Daniel? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So peep game. So I was only a four star athlete coming out of high school, right? Okay. But my um junior year i got invited to the nike spark camp in fort worth and fort worth is like probably their number two highest rated camp and i was the number two athlete of the entire camp as a linebacker wow. so i beat out running backs wide receivers cornerbacks like all of them, right i was number two in the entire camp so i was only a four-star recruit but a m was there ut was there uh tennessee was there uh texas tech all these guys they were like wait how is this linebacker as a junior number two so that put me on the map um um, any any big names there at that camp i can't remember at the time okay okay i mean i just remember like that year i was coming out it was like their number it was basically it it was one of the premier nike spark camps that they were putting (laughs) on because all bro all the colleges was there. I mean, like yeah. every big name cop, Miami, like uh Miami was there, Oklahoma was there, UCLA, uh USC, like every big known like college was there. So like after I had got number two there, I was basically going all their like list. And then going into my senior year it was just kind of like, all right, you know, if I did well, then I did I did do well. And then I started getting offers. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That's crazy, crazy, bro. Um, so after your after your career was uh, was done at Texas Tech, how close? Like, were you pursuing a professional career in the NFL? Yeah. So like, it was crazy. So like, my my um, so um, my end of my junior year, I was looked at to be one of the impact or like premier players for the defense and at Tech. Right now, yep. we didn't really have the biggest respect in the Big Twelve as defense, whatever, right. but. You know, I had some, I had some clout behind my name. By the end of my senior season, I was projected to get drafted um, uh, in the seventh round. So, crazy story. I ended up uh, tweeting uh, my senior year about 
Coach Leach being late to a meeting, and it was all over ESPN. That same week, we had, like, three other players that had, like, really, like, negative um, – tweets about just the program and everything so like leech was oh, like oh that's can't. right you remember that you remember yes that? I, I remember, remember. I remember. Yeah. bro so leech scrapped all of our social media and like i had this meeting he like, they almost kicked me off the team this is my senior year bro they almost kicked Damn. me off the team and there was like we don't know we don't know if we're if you're even going to be on the team let alone play the next game they said, but the first thing that you're going to do if you want to stay here is you're going to delete your Twitter right now. So I had to delete my whole Twitter, bro. And at this time, bro, I'd already had like 7,000 followers, bro. This is back in the day. Back, yeah, exactly, bro. I was on like, bro, I was on so many blogs, bro. I could like, I could have tweeted a poop emoji and probably would have got 100 retweets. You know what I mean? Like, I was popping, bro. Oh my I god! I delete that mug, bro. I was so <laughs> hot, but I was like, I can't, I can't get cut. I can't get cut. Right? No, no. So then he made another mandatory thing. He was like, "Don't talk to no agents until the season is over." All y'all is already worried what? about getting to the league, and you're not playing well. You're not focused. So I made the dumb mistake of waiting till the very last minute to get an agent. And I remember my agent called me. He was like, "Bro," he was like, "Man, you're on." You're people's like potential roster like people really want you he's like but we didn't got so we didn't got started so late in the game that like you don't move down the list and i was like are you serious bro he's like yeah bro he's like you still on the board but you know these other agents have already locked in you know one-on-one tryouts with these guys he's like you're gonna have to fight over the fact that you know you're only five listed as 510 where majority Man. of the linebackers that year bro you gotta remember so, like, the year I was coming out, there were some big linebackers. It was, like, the year, like, I mean, I think the average linebacker in Big 12 was, like, 6'3", I think 230. You know what I mean? And I was yeah. 220 soaking wet. You know what I mean? Like, so I went to Canada. So I ended up doing – I didn't get drafted. My agent stopped calling me. So I was just like, crap, I'm out here on my own, right? So then I – um. I had to literally pay. I had to pay to fly to Vegas, and I had to pay to fly to to L.A. to do the very – and these are the very last open tryouts for the CFL. Oh, okay. okay. These are the very last open tryouts for the CFL. So if I didn't make it on one of these two, like it was, it, then my, it was over. So I flew out to um, – I flew out to Vegas and did absolutely terrible. I just didn't know what the hell was going on. I was just, it was just, it was just, I didn't, I didn't get it. Yeah. Then I went to LA, did a tryout, and I literally murked the whole camp. They basically signed me that day. Went through the whole camp, get to the end. Head coach is just like hyping me up. He's like, I'm in the thing. He's like, man, you did good, bro. He's like, man, you raised the level of competition in camp. I remember it was, it was like the last two weeks of camp, and like the number, the, the one and two linebacker was like, you're going to run drills with us. So they they wanted me in there over the other guy. So I'm like, bro, I'm making the team. I'm about to get this contract. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, get my jersey ready, baby. You know what I mean? You know? Coach is like, man, you did real well, man. You picked up the playbook. He's like, man, like, oh, God, man. Like, you made the offense better and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, he about to tell me how much I'm getting paid. He's like, yeah. Well, we're going to have to send you home. We don't have roster space. I was like, what? damn. Bro. I was so shook, bro. And this is the thing, right? What? Exactly. So this is the thing about what people don't know about Canada. And I didn't know this because I didn't have my agent coach. Because at this time, me and my agents weren't talking. So we weren't. In Canada, they have a, they have unwritten rule, rules that certain Canadian positions have to be played by a Canadian. Oh, I didn't and know that. Exactly, because it's not in the rule books. It's not a. It's not like on paper. Oh, it's like okay. an unwritten rule, right? And okay. then there's like some leeway. So like, if you have a American player in this position, then you know what I mean you have to have a a Canadian pitch, uh, player in this position. But if an American player is in this position, then this other position has to be um, Canadian. Canadian, right? No. The middle linebacker normally has to be Canadian. The middle linebacker at on our was this this is the the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The middle linebacker at the time was the number one linebacker in the CFL. <laughs> guess what position had to be 
the <laughs> guess what position had to be uh, Canadian? Weak side linebacker. And that's oh, the position that I was trying out for. Oh, God. So when the coach told me that there nope. wasn't roster space, I'm thinking, like, what are you talking about? I'm better than everybody else. Yeah. I got to be on the roster. It was just the nature of the game that I was playing a position that when when all the cuts were made and they had to nail it down, because there's only like 52 spots on teams in Canada. Mm-hmm. It was basically like, well, you're good enough, but we have to leave room for these Canadian players and you're a rookie and we have a lot of bets. So it's like we can't keep you because then it'll mess up the numbers for other players. So then, and then that was it. After I came back home, it was just like I didn't have an agent. I didn't have like – you know, I didn't really have a place to train anymore. Like, cause, uh, you know, the place that I was trained was like an agent's friend. So he was like, let me train mm. for free. So it was just, you know, it just kind of went downhill from there. Just never, I never really got back into it after that. Dang. Man. Right. Crazy. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, we, it's, man. we actually got, uh, Archie chiming in. He's actually from Canada. He said, yep. A CFL team may dress up to 44 players composed of 21 nationals, essentially Canadians, 20 internationals, almost yeah. exclusively Americans, and then three quarterbacks. Sucks. Yeah. Rosters are small, and like I said, 20, what did you say, 21 has to be pretty much Canadians, you know? That is crazy. No, I didn't and yeah. I, I didn't know any of this walking in there. I thought it was just best man gets the spot. So I'm like, right? balling my life out. Not knowing <laughs> I should have been going for strong side linebacker versus yeah. weak side, and I would have made the roster. Yeah. Cool. They could they, they could they they didn't think about moving you over to that to that position, like saying, Hey Marlon, can you play anywhere else? I mean, you know what was funny, bro? Because like and this is the thing, bro. When you when you're trying out for like a professional football team, whether mm-hmm. it's Canadian or um you know, American NFL, or whatever, right, bro? You're in, you're, dude, it's, it is a pressure cooker, bro. It is stress, oh, man. Bad. I remember, like, you, so, like, we were, we were training at this, uh, this, uh, university. We weren't even training at their facility. So, you, we walked into the locker room. There's stickers on your locker with your name on it, right? So, a lot of times we would walk into the locker room and a dude would go to his locker and he'd be like, bro, my name is not Hernandez, fam. Like, I'm, my last name is Williams, bro. My name's not Her- my, Why is there Hernandez on my locker? You open up the locker, there's all new stuff in there. And all you see is a coach come in and say, hey, uh, you got your playbook? He's like, yeah, the coach needs to see you. In other words, you're cut. Right? So you're living that mentality. So for me, I was just like, bro, whatever position I start picking up, I need to pick that up and stick with it and make sure I show them I'm the best at that. Or else I'm walking into a whole new sticker. My last right. name is Williams. It's going to say Gonzalez. And I'm going to be like, I don't know what the hell going on. You know what I mean? So my coach was like, hey, can you play middle linebacker? And I was like, ah, you know, I'm trying to learn a playbook for weak side. Right. But I thought I was going to be safe because I I made sure that I was on the, on the depth chart for every special team. So I was on first or second on all special teams. So I thought that would carry me over. But, you know, lo and behold, it was like I should have been – trying out for you know mike or strong or some other position oh man it's crazy it's cutthroat man it's cut sounds like it's cutthroat um all right so after all that was done what led you to being cast for the real world portland so i was uh i ended up going back to love it and um i was trying to get my engineering degree and bro physics two is not my thing <laughs> <laughs> Now, hold on, hold on. I'm a smart guy. Like, I, yeah. despite, you know, I've been on reality TV. You know what I mean? I've done, I opted out of, I tested high enough in my math that I went straight to Cal 1 in college, right? I did Cal oh, 1, shoot. Cal 2, Cal 3. They're f- differential equations, if you know what that is. Engineering mm-hmm. statistics, engineering dynamics, materials, right? Like, I've taken, I'm I'm a smart individual on some level, right? But physics too? <laughs> nah, fam. Nah, fam. <laughs> so... What was basically what was happening was is I was on my third year or I was on my third semester of trying to pass physics too, and I started realizing I'm probably not gonna be an engineer. Okay, like uh, I'm probably gonna have to need it. I'm gonna need another plan in life. And uh, I went to MTV because I was this was before Shazam and you know Spotify, and I was on MTV trying to find a, a song that I had heard on like MTV Two. I figured it'd be on their list, and when I got on the website. It was like, hey, 
have you ever thought about being on TV? Like a little pop-up comes up. Physics two, one more semester. Reality TV. <laughs> mm, I'm gonna go try this out for a second. So I just I did a questionnaire, uh, sent in some pictures, and I'm thinking, man, ain't nothing gonna happen. Like they ain't gonna call me. About a week later, one of the producers called me. They were like, "Hey, is this Marlon? Like you, you, you know, this is MTV. We want to talk to you about your questionnaire." And I was like, "Bro, I at first I thought somebody was playing on the phone." Yeah. You know what I mean? But I was like, well, how else would they have my number? So I just went along with it and uh, ended up being them. And um, then I just went through the interview process from there and ended up on the show. That's crazy, man. Yeah, That's bro. Because, like, you know, a lot of people, they go, like, in Atlanta, they go to L.A., and they do in-person interviews where you, like, you know, they, like, they like, rent out, like, a stadium or they rent out, like, a big room and, like, people wait in line for hours Whoa. just to get in front of casting like casting uh agents and you might walk in and they cut you in 30 seconds no nah, you're not gonna make it yeah or you'll walk in you'll go through like 30 minutes or 30 seconds like mm, maybe we'll let you know i mean then they're, they're just burning and turning them burning and turning them burning and turning them dude like it's insane right so for me it's like bro i did a questionnaire and sent in some photos and got casted you know what i mean like i i it was it, it was it just meant it was meant to be for me i i, I think yeah you know what i mean like it was for whatever reason that's the route that i should have been on because there's no other way i can explain how i made it that way versus all these people that you know have talent agents they're doing modeling gigs and mm -hmm. whatever, you know what i mean so mm -hmm. So your season was pretty um, – it's pretty up there in the ranks of people that love your season in Portland. A lot of controversy. A lot of a, a lot of big, you know, issues came up in that season. What What is your take on arguably the biggest fight ever in the history of the real world between Johnny, Riley, Avery, Anaya, and Jordan? Bro, chaos, man. Like that <sighs> – Bro, after that fight, I thought we was all getting sent home. I thought they was packing the bags. <laughs> y'all crazy. This is this is too much. Like y'all fired. Um, but no, like and a lot of people, I, I I don't think a lot of people don't understand like how much, um, like how much stuff built up to that. Like that was right. a very. I mean, dude, I'm talking three weeks of just, you know, this thing, that thing, this thing, that thing, this into it to, to the point to where. It, that was the only way it was going to end was like somebody was going to have to throw hands and leave it at that. But when, when I seen her pick up the blow dryer though, I was oh. like, Oh wow. On a scale of one to 10, we had 13. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so now, so now we're not just getting fired. People going to jail. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I need to leave before the police get called. I'm out. Like uh, y'all yeah. figure this out. But that, I mean, that, that was an intense fight. And, and, it, I, it was a growing experience, man. We were all super young, you know. We were partying stupid hard. We had no obligations. We had no real responsibilities, you know. Um, and it, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that I could be a part of it because I, I feel like, like you said, I think one of our our season is one of those seasons that was very. It touched on a lot of things. It was controversial. Mm -hmm. It's, it's up there, and it's just kind of cool that, you know, when I'm a old grandpa i can actually tell my kids like i was cool <laughs> and i got proof <laughs> <You know what? laughs> oh. we got uh austin chiming in how do you feel about what jordan did deny oh man you know in the heat of the moment let me plug this in man because i don't want my phone to die on y'all you're good you're good yeah you're good uh, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you, anyways, Marlon. Uh, I, I know it's a, I know, I know you visited that question before on your Twitter because someone brought it up to you, and, and you know it's the past and all that being resurfaced. But yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, I, I still think that that, as, as ironic as it is, I think that's a very relevant, um, a very relevant um, topic for, for even kind of like things going on now. Um, there were so many things wrong with 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 what happened between both of them um but i, I guess i'm kind of, i'm kind of glad that it happened and i was there because I, I i don't think other black males would have been able to go through that that altercation and been able to like 
mm. handle it the way I did because, mm-hmm. you know, there were some other previous conversations and there were some other things that had happened, like even between me and Jordan, that I could kind of tell that at that time, you know, he was one of those individuals that didn't really truly understand the dynamic difference in how a black person had to live their life in America versus a white person. And I think he didn't really truly understand the difference in the culture and why certain things are just a no, no zone. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm glad it happened because I think that that was the first time, like I think in history that somebody like him had to really honestly confront like what he did and really honestly like deal with the consequences. Cause he got it bad after that, that show aired, after that episode aired, he got it bad. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm glad it happened in the sense that it could open up the dialogue. Cause we talked about it on the reunion show. We talked about it, you know, publicly on Twitter, Naya and Jordan had a very long dialogue on social media, even in their own life. And then you can see, I, and what, what I really like about it, especially for now, is you can see two people on such a polar opposite. And now you look you look fast forward to now, and they're friends. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which kind of goes back to that that question of, from earlier. is like, do you think that we could unite? Do you think that we could come back together like, you know, as a nation? I'll say yes. I mean, you look at two people with such a intense, negative, like, um, relationship, some of it based in race, some of it based in gender, some of it based in, you know, just cultural differences, be able to mend that and then be on a completely like talking, you know, friendship based relationship shows you like we can grow from all this crap that we're going through. We can mend all this crap that we're going through, but it takes a very long extended dialogue where both people just talk it out and try to relate and try to be empathetic. You know what I mean? Definitely. I definitely agree with you on that. And Marlon, I know, I know a a part of you in in your journey on that show was you coming out to the world. It's in in saying that uh, I want to get the correct term bisexual. Yeah. So how, how was that for you and you, and and you as, as a, as a man and you as, as a person that, and and on national TV that millions are going to see that, I mean, it, bravo to you, my man, for you being have the courage to do that. Man, bro, that was that was that was a very very tough. Um, yeah, I mean, that brought a lot of negativity my way that I wasn't really expecting, and a lot of people don't understand. Like the timeline for me was crazy because, like, when the show aired, I was actually filming Rivals too. So, oh wow. The, so like the first, I think it was like the first three or four episodes, I didn't get to see them right when they aired because I was actually, I was in the midst of filming Rivals, mm-hmm. right? So to be honest with you, when I came back home, I was kind of hit with everything all at once, right? Because we were already like four or five episodes in, mm-hmm. um, no one, you know, in my circle of like actual people I hung out with had seen me in a while. You know, um, and it was bad, dude. Like I remember, I remember I got jumped outside of the club a few times. Um, <sighs> I remember, uh, and I remember this girl. I don't even know. If, I don't know if the photo is still out there, but I remember one time that I got jumped out outside of a club. One of the fans came up to me. He's like, "I want to take a picture. I want to take a picture." And I was like, "I just got jumped. I'm not in the mood to take a picture. I like, want to take a picture." And I like, I remember I took the picture. And I remember the next day I got tagged in it. I just remember my lip was busted. Like it, my eye was swollen and I was just like, Oh my God. Um, I remember, um, I had like, I had a album out cause I was doing music at the time. Right. And I had set up a few, um, venues where I was going to do some shows or whatever. And I remember like the promoters had called me back and they were like, yo, uh, you know, I'm not going to do business with faggot with, a, with no faggot and like canceled the show. And like, it, it was just like, it was really tough to deal with just because it was like everything that I had done up until that point no longer had any value. Yes. And, and I, and I also think that like me coming out, being the type of having the type of background I had, I feel like I got it worse than most people because mm. when you look at 
everything that I've accomplished as a man, when you take sexuality out of it, when you look at everything that I've accomplished as a man and everything that people were like looking up from looking up, you know, for me, the average straight man is going to look at me and my accolades and say, I want to be like him. Oh, without a doubt. Right. He's a football player. He's a rapper. He's got the girls. He's, you know, a celebrity. He's, you know, he's got all these football accolades. He's super strong in the gym, like all this stuff. He's like, dang, I want to be like that. So then I think I got hit with the hate a little bit harder at the time because then it's like all these guys had to come to this, had to come to this realization that like, oh shit, I looked up and wanted to be like somebody that wasn't straight. And I think that I had to deal with way more hate because like a lot of people had to re, a lot of men had to re, revalidate themselves right. as straight men by making sure that like, oh, we don't tolerate him. He's bad. Like da 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 da. So I got a bag coming out. And then, you know, do, things change. Yeah. You know do you, well, mean? the reason why, when you say things change, do you think that you have a way, just a way, I think you do, of paving the way for these athletes to come out? Even if they're gay, straight, bisexual, it don't matter. Do you think that you paved the way? Because you were, you, you were, like you said, one of the first to come out as an athlete on a on a show saying what you are. You know what, bro? I didn't even think about that. I read I read an like, I read an article before. Known, as a known athlete, or someone that was looked at as an athlete. Yeah, I think I might have been one of the first to. The reason why I the reason why I ask you that is because. I remember Michael Sam coming out, and then his draft stock plummeted, and he plummeted. didn't get in, plummeted. Big and he time. he he was a good player. I mean, let's get let's get it real about it. He was a great player. He so was good. And I remember writing reading an article where he, I I I might be mistaken, but I remember seeing your name on there as one of his inspirations for being the person that he is. I gotta well, go look for crazy. it. I met Michael Sam out here in Dallas. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why oh, I thought there was a shit. connection. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean. I do. I, I think that. I think I, I definitely do think I opened the door. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I definitely opened the door, shined the light on the fact that this is a possibility in sports, or this is a possibility in such a straight male dominated sport that yo, like this is a reality that exists. So I do think I opened the door on that. Um, I mean, if I inspired, you know, someone else or paved the way i mean I, I i don't know but i do think that i helped start the conversation that you did male athletes can be this way and still be successful and still have value because here's one that performed extremely well you know and it's just that you guys didn't know exactly. um but uh, that's crazy, bro. Because I actually, I actually hung out with Max. You know what's funny, man? I, and I'm not trying to be like shady or anything. A lot no, of, um, good. a lot of. Um, I remember after I did Rivals Two and I had came back, and then people knew that I had won the final, or I, I knew that I had made it to the final. As the final, movie. yeah. Um, it kind of put a little bit of stripes. You know, it, it kind of gave me a little bit more clout because, like, okay, this dude's still out here kind of competing. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of. NFL players actually reached out to me. They never like it was never like anything public, but a few of them reached out to me, and I was one. And to, and, and to this day, I think that maybe some of those guys may have been either thinking about coming out or probably wanted to have that conversation with me, but it just never got there. Um, um, but it might have been, you know, like you said, it might have just opened that door just so that that conversation could be had. You know, definitely, definitely. So. You know, with all that being said, are you still close with your cast? Um, yeah, bro. I just talked to Jordan. Um, I was chopping up with Jordan uh yesterday because he said he's gonna be out here in Dallas quite a bit. So he was gonna hit me up because he's doing a lot of trips um uh, to and from Dallas. So we're gonna link up when he comes out here. Um, I think he's doing there's a lot of like triathlons out here, so he's kind of on that kick right now. So um dude, my guy's been working work. out, bro. <laughs> bruh. He's been getting it, bro. Oh, like, I mean, it's, it's where, I mean, he just gets better and better and better. It's just like yeah, he's like a machine, bro. It's just like upgrade, dude. Next year, upgrade. Next year, upgrade. Like, bro, 
I, I swear to you, ever since Fessy came out and said that video about how no one could touch him, I'm telling you, man, I think Jordan's just got that extra motivation. And I, I think he's forgotten about you, bro. No, bro. Like, 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 like I already know. Like, Jordan's probably saw that was like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. like, because I know, like, I'm the GOAT. Jordan is just sitting back, like, bro, I'm the GOAT. Like, yep. I can do this. This, like, yep. the challenge was made for me. Like, don't yep. get it twisted. Uh, but especially, dude's a badass. Dude's especially, a certified badass. Oh, yeah. Especially after the rumors that are going on around between Fessy and Tori. So, you know. Oh, bro. Okay. So, man. You got a scoop? You got I, don't a know. Scoop? I don't got no scoop on that. Oh, you got me. your oh, reaction guy. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Right, wait. right, right. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's like, lay it down, lay it down. No, I okay. got no scoop on that. Oh. I, 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 look, I'm just saying that whole situation looks a little sketchy because. Oh, beyond. And I don't know. I don't even know if it's just the way the edit was, but like they, I, they had something. Tori and Fessy had something whenever they were filming this. Now. Mm -hmm. When they filmed this versus the timeline of when they were having some issues and broke up is looking sketchy, is all I'm gonna say. And I agree. Um, I just hope the best for Jordan, just because like that's my boy. I I mean I know him personally. I don't want to say Tori's a bad person or anything. I just don't know her personally. So I'm just hoping that this situation, you know, works itself out because it's just not right. it doesn't look good on Tori's part. No. I remember reading something about it where it said that she mentioned that they had taken time off before she went on the show to see where they were at. And then that's what I read. I'm like, she make it seem like on the show that they're still together. Right. Right. Because right. on the show, when she was talking, it's, and it's the thing, she was on the show and I think she was having this conversation around Fessy, I think, or to Fessy. And it was like, yeah, we we're having some issues and da da da. So it's like, y'all still together. Y'all exactly. were still yeah. together when you was on the show. Like, don't, like, I mean, and then, and then even Jordan had got on his um uh Instagram. Instagram. Yep. And even he was like, Well, this is news to me. Right. He's like, <laughs> he's like you know what I mean? Like, look, I ain't boo boo the fool. I can do some basic adding and some <laughs> <laughs> These days don't match. I'm sorry. And then you had Corey oh, made that comment on on air where he was like Something's up. He was like, he, he's oh, like, fishy. I can, I can see something, and I'm right there. Yeah, right, like, yep. yeah, no, nah, Tori. And then too, Tori kind of took an L because it's like Tori's stock is plummeting a little bit right now. <laughs> if we're gonna be honest, bro. Look, and I'm, you're the, I'm you're the second person to say this. We we oh, interviewed man. Ashley last week, and they have her overrated, and we think that she's overrated, bro. But 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 she did it to herself, bro. She did. Like, Okay, so I think I root for Tori. I, I, I think, like, whenever Tori went against Jenny and, and the whole thing, that's, I, I really started rooting for Tori. I was like, oh, okay, okay yeah. Like, like, I think this girl could really come in this game and, like, be a heavy hitter. But, like, she talking big and not putting up. And it's like, for you to go into such, in such, for you to go into an elimination round against Anissa and lose the way you lost, it's like, you can't, you can't talk that game no more. You can't, because, like, you, you haven't performed, you haven't significantly outperformed the females in the daily challenges. Then you go on elimination around against somebody that you consistently look at as possibly a toss up, an easy win, and then you flop completely. And, and Jenna. Yeah. So it's just lost like, to Jenna too got, last season. You were last season the same thing. So yeah. like, you needed like at this point, I just feel like like I still think she has the potential, but I think she needs to just not talk. Win some shit. Dial and, back. And, and, and it didn't even have to be a final. It didn't have to be a final. Stop talking. <sighs> win some shit. Take out a Jenny or take out a Cam. Then you can have a little bit of bragging rights. Just a little bit. Just I think she bit. I think she came into this season and not thinking that there was so many rookies that are on there that could just gang up on uh, people and she just came in and was like you guys need to earn it blah 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 usually there's only a couple rookies uh, this season there were a bunch yeah and she came in just gang buster like Still you guys need perform. to yeah you, you guys need to did? earn this and that you know what she did this is exactly what she did the old style of the challenge was there was going to be a lot of vets 
and a few rookies, few rookies to get us through the first two or three episodes, right? Yep. Yep. So what she saw when she walked into the house is, is oh shit, I'm the vet now. But she didn't do the math, and she didn't she didn't look at the politics and the social game of the fact that the vets don't have that power like they do in these old previous challenges that she was used to being. Because it would be Nani, Ashley, you know, Teresa, like all these, you know, vets that have already have history and they could just manipulate the game, get the rookies out. What she didn't realize is that wasn't that type of dynamic this season. So you couldn't be the so-called vet just because you had the most experience as a female or you were up there on the experience chart and go around and think you could just talk shit about people because – now, now, especially in the game, the rookies got numbers. The yep. rookies have enough votes. The rookies have enough numbers that that if they want to come for you, they can make a play. And she miscalculated that, thinking that her vet status would save her in a bit in the butt. She was bragging too much. That's what bragging happened. Too much. That's what happens. Hey, so since we're talking about challenge two, which was unfortunately your only season that we got of of evidence of you, how was the experience for you? And then I just want to know, man. How in the hell were you able to win that elimination against Leroy and Alton where you had Leroy in one hand and then you brought Alton down with the other hand? And, and I just watched it today. Bro. I mean, bro. And Leroy Dude. was talking that smack. Talking about Dude, you, you know know what's funny? D1. You know what's funny? I don't even know if they aired it. Me and Leroy had like a wrestling match the day before the elimination. No, they didn't. Yeah. So peep game though, peep game. So like, and this is the thing that they don't understand is like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so my demeanor in the challenge in the in, in the challenge house at that time was it was different. Like I was in a different headspace. So I was just keeping my head down. I wasn't really trying to make a lot of noise. I mean, obviously I got into an altercation with CT. I got into an altercation with Knight. That was awesome, but, by the way. Great, was great. great. The CT one was great. The night I didn't care. Night's night. <laughs> CT right, right, right. one. Oh. Bro. And then look at he was mad at me, and it wasn't even my fault. Bro. I know. Like, bro, why are you mad at me? You you mad at the wrong guy. But then at the same time, I'm thinking like, okay, I'm not about to just let him punk me because if I let him punk me, then everybody else in the house is gonna be like, okay, this is an easy rookie that we can have a pushover on. But I think a lot of people put some respect on my name because they were like, oh, okay. Yeah. He's going after CT, and he's not backing down, and he's not like he's not afraid. So like this kid could could be something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the um, it was either the day before, or maybe two days before the actual elimination round between uh, uh, me and Leroy. Uh, Jordan had a wrestling like a little wrestling competition with Z with uh, Frank, and then I had like a little res wrestling competition with Leroy. But peep game, I purposefully lost the wrestling match with Leroy to make him feel like, you know, he was more dominant or like he could like overpower, oh. him, right? And he didn't understand that I was playing the mental game. You know what I mean? I, I was actually really honestly playing the mental game. And I was just really trying to, I was personally trying to get a feel for like how strong he was. Yeah. So like I would say probably about 30 seconds into the like wrestling match, I realized like he's not, he's not strong on my level. Like, ah, as far as, like, if it's just raw strength, me versus him, I was like, I know I can out-muscle him if it really comes down to it. So then I was just like, I, I ain't even going to let him know because he's going to go in with this, like, big mindset, like, you know, yeah. oh, my God. Like I, so they don't show it. But the very first round, I literally picked Leroy up and body slammed him to the ground on the very first round. They just didn't catch it on camera. You see, you see the hell is he doing? Very, very, I'm telling you, go back and look at this. this very, very small clip where you see um, Jordan kind of coming by the screen and and they and they show like me and Leroy in the background. So it's like, oh, you know, oh, so it's like me and Leroy in the background. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. Leroy and Jordan is running like this towards yeah. the thing. And you just see me kind of like, like having Leroy like this. And then it cuts the screen, bro. But like literally the very first Ooh. round. Oh I just came out the gates and just put Leroy on his back. And then the, then the next round, Leroy wow. came with the sauce. Like, so I'm going into the second round, I was like, oh, bro, I'm about to just body Leroy. This is easy. Like, we're winning. But then he came with a little bit more sauce that second round. So I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Uh, step it up. He had a little left in the tank, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay he might have been he a little bit. But, uh, 
And then that third round, it was just like, all right, man, everybody brought the sauce. And, like, it was so crazy because it's like it, me and Leroy stalemated in the middle. And then, like, when Jordan came in, it was just like two cement walls just hitting each other. So it was just like, boom. So we were just sitting there, like, just going at it, going at it. I was going back. Leroy was going back. And somehow, like, Ty, like, slipped underneath and was going. So I had to, like, chop Leroy off of me because he was trying to pull me back once he got through. So I had to, like, chop him off. And when I grabbed Leroy, I had just enough, like, link to take. I took, like, two steps. I was like, bro, Ty's about to hit this buzzer. I was like, he's about to hit the buzzer. So I just jumped over the top and put my arm around, like, Ty's neck and just, like, <laughs> bear clawed him down to the ground. I was just like, I don't care if we don't move or anything, but I'm, we will stay right here this entire time <laughs> until Jordan Bush hits that buzzer, bro. I'm sorry. You're not moving. You're not moving, bro. Oh, like, he did it. He yeah. did it, bro. Yeah. Jordan hit the spin move, and it was like, all right, we win. I was just like, goodness gracious. Bro. Oh, my oh. God. Heart was oh. pounding, man. I, oh. I, don't even, I don't even know if they really – I don't really know how close he was, but I just remember in my mind – it was like oh, the he was close. right here. And I just remember like Ty was already at the point of getting ready to touch the bell. And yep. I just remember right when I saw, I, I could have sworn I saw his hand being about six inches away from it. And I was just like Hulk smash. And I just put everything <laughs> straight and just pinning him down. I was just like, no, we're not going home. Like you're staying right here. And it, it just, I don't know, man, it worked. That's it awesome, crazy. man. And how was the experience? Was the experience awesome for you? Did you love it? Did you love man, the final? I loved it, man. Like, because then we have like we had these off days. So we went to like this little secret cove um where it was like um uh, it was like in the movies, bro, where it's a beach and then it's nothing but it's like it's like a beach right here, and then it's like all encaved in rock. So oh. we had like our own little personal beach cove for a day. You know, we had like drinks and get in the water. Then they brought like a little elephant, a baby elephant by so you could uh pet the baby elephant. That was cool. And then they took us out. Um, so then we made the final. So then like the day before we got ready to go to the final, they took us out on one of those yachts. Um, um, not quite like uh y'all know Medi the, the Mediterranean like, or, or below deck. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So a little bit a little bit smaller than those. Like a little bit smaller version of one of those, and they took us all the way out into the sea in the in Thailand for probably like it was like a I think it was like a two hour just boat ride, and we stopped at this little spot, bro, and it looked like the cover of National Geographic. The water was crystal blue. I'm talking about you could just look over and see Finding Nemo like in the water, like you they mean you was just right there, and then like off the coast was like another like little beach, and we just was out there with a little personal chef snorkeling it was just i mean it was like a movie man like it was, it was it was a really good time that's awesome man that's dope dude i like that a lot um so um a uh, couple comments here uh also wants to know how many minutes did bananas afraid beat you in the puzzle by the puzzle for the finals bro it wasn't even that much um i think they got like a three a solid three minute head start okay they timed out. They didn't. Uh, mm, they I think they solved their puzzle right before the timeout because you know obviously like they only let you do each thing. So like they had solved their puzzle, and I think we were like two maybe three minutes away from our timed out, and then we just hopped in the boat and tried to catch them. Got you. Okay. Is there anything like goes to challenge where I know there's like a lot of myths and like a lot of fairy tales where they say like you know production probably favored Johnny Bananas a lot. Or production does this. Is there anything like that behind the scenes that people don't know about? Man, I wasn't. I mean, I haven't done it enough to really know. You know what I mean? Okay. So, okay. Rivals too. You know, I'm. A, I'm a, I was a glorified rookie, so I. I didn't know what to look for. You know what I mean? I didn't know. Hell, most of the time, I didn't even know what the hell was going on. I was just like, all right, well, we <laughs> we jumping off shit today? Okay, great. Just point me left, right? Okay. All right. But, oh, we got to eat something? Okay. I hope it's healthy. Organic? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm just thinking, like, I got to get this money, you know? So I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't know. Um, I, I would say that 
I don't know, man. It's hard to say that they don't just because it's like, you know, there's money involved, there's ratings, there's all this other stuff. And yeah, we, we I, just found I, out. I don't we think just, Johnny Bananas has won everything on his own. I will say that. That's fair. I, yeah, don't, just, I don't think I don't think he has, man. Daniel and I just found out a couple weeks ago that they give out guaranteed contracts. So I, I had no idea about that. Ashley told us about that, and my mouth dropped because it's like, okay, that makes sense then. Because you know all these guys keep up returning, and they and then they get eliminated in the the beginning, like like let's say Wes, you know, he gets right, eliminated right. beginning of the season. He still gets his guaranteed full money. That's dope. Oh yeah, no, no, there's definitely guaranteed money. Now, now we didn't get uh we didn't get guaranteed money just because it was right because you're rookie. Yeah, we yeah. were rookies. There's only the same show, but yeah, the fur the more shows you do or or whatever, yeah, you get to a point where you get a guaranteed contract. But that was something that they had to fight for. That was something that like uh, oh back, yeah, bro. It wasn't all it wasn't always like that. Wow. So they had to do a um they had to do a boycott. Um, this was a while ago. This is like way before I, this is even, I think this was even before I was on Real World. But they had to do like a boycott and they were basically like saying like, y'all need to renegotiate the pay structure um, because y'all are making so much money off this show. So they actually had boycotted like not coming back to the challenge to renegotiate to where people could get guaranteed money, get better contracts wow. to pay. But so yeah, that's been around, that's been around for a while. I had no idea about that. That's crazy. Yeah, but I remember. It could, it could influence it. It's like, yo, we're guaranteeing you, you know, X amount of dollars. We don't want to see you go home, you yeah. know, day one. Yeah, I remember reading about it where it was like they structured it based off how long you've been on the show, the show. So if you're like a more established person, they gave you more money than somebody that just came on the show. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I mean, the more shows you do, the more you get paid. Um, <laughs> I hope Josh sure. don't have a guaranteed <laughs> contract. I got a guaranteed contract yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to get, you know, what, what I'm trying to make a team again. Shit. But, no. but you know, it is. Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Can you hear me? A little bit, yeah. Can you hear him, Daniel? I can hear him, just a little staticky. Okay. Yeah, it's like a little staticky. Yeah, it's his side. Yeah, hey, uh, Marley, how about you uh, back out real quick and come back in real quick? Hey guys, in the meantime, here check uh, check out uh, our commercial we got right here for you guys, real quick. Good deal. Let's try to get Marlon back on, see if he's good to go. There we go. There we go. Can you hear us? Oh. Ah, he's a little. Okay. You want to go? Oh, let's see if we can get him one more time. I think it might be mine. Uh, yeah. Hey, do, you have, do you have another commercial for the? Yeah, the, we'll play the, the schedule for the week uh, that we hear of the buzz. Here's our uh, promo for that. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. War. Tell them that's what we ready for. War. Bringing that to competitors. Till we see the confetti fall, be ready for war. Tell them that's what we ready for. War. Tell them that's what we ready for. War. Bringing that to competitors. Till we see the confetti fall, be ready for war. Tell them I'm ready, any opponent. The crown heavy and every minute it shows it. A path only fit for kings, and you will know what this court means. What did you enlist for? If it isn't getting more rings, then you gon' have to switch your team. Uh. 
trust me, it gets more mean. I'm a nightmare going up against your dreams. First step is explosive like a bomb hit. Bet if I let it fly, I cannot miss. And you ain't got a chance at the top 10 when you getting clamped all night by your locksmith. On the block, throwing lobs to my top bigs. I'm a chef, no look, what's the top dish? Tie game, through the pressure, Mr. Clock ticks. Cross over, step back, hit a shot, switch. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Bringing that to competitors. So we see the confetti ball, be ready for war. This is how champions are made, but it never happens in a day. It's all hard work, but it's why what happens when we play nine out of ten times. I'm gonna you with all right, let's see if this works now uh, for um, our guy Marlon. Marlon, can you hear me? All right, see if I can. We good? Is it better? Uh, so shit. Yeah, can you hear us? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. I can hear y'all. It's still staticky, but okay, man. No worries. We only got a few more questions left, and we'll uh, well, in the night. Um. Uh, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about your personal training business and how's that? How's that I going try for to call you? you guys back on my uh, computer. Okay, yeah, that could um, work. So I mean, it was going really well. You want to call you on my computer? Let me try. All right. Uh, um. We have uh, one more uh, one more commercial for you guys. You guys check it out. You guys have noticed we're wearing our Manscaped t-shirts. We are partnered with Manscaped, 20% off. Um, use our promo codes that we, uh, that, uh, we have um, uh, for now. Uh, game-winning drive is GWD 2020. Um, you can use that, 20% off, and free shipping. Check this out. Uh, check out this clip before we get Marlon back on. Sir, that's Manscaped. That's what you need to get back to help you out with your things, your personal things. Great for uh, I know Danny and I have been uh, being able to use the products, it's been great for our beards, uh, for your hair, and also your balls will thank you for it. Uh, it looks like we got him back on. Is he good to go? Can't hear you. You're mute. Yeah, we can't hear you. How about now? There you go. You're good now. Uh, there we go. There, there we, we go. go. There we go. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, man, I think I need to cop one of those. Uh, I think I need to cop one of those edgers, though, for the beard. Was that a? Uh... Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to grow mine out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay. 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 I'm not. As, I'm not. As, I'm not as thick as my man over here with the red. I got a couple <laughs> spots. You know what I'm, saying? But I'm working on it. You know. Okay. Getting okay. there. Getting there. Hey, so we, only, we only got a few more questions for you, Marlon. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, um, uh, I know it's 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 getting late. Um, how was your how like you said, Battle of the uh, X of the Beach, uh, Peak of Love? You were there with Jimmy, which was a really cool surprise to the fans because we haven't seen her in a while. How was that? How was that season for you, man? How was uh, it, that? Was a different different type of theme, man. A lot of drama there, bro. Stressful, man. <laughs> like, um. That was just drama after drama after drama. Dude, I was in so much heat that whole time. Like, I think I'm going to say the first maybe three days there, like, was probably the only time that I wasn't, like, on thin ice with somebody. Like, I was in so much drama. It was crazy. Um, but New Zealand was dope. Yeah. Like, I I mean, dude, like, that that place is super sick. Um, Jimmy's dope, though. Like, me and Jimmy kind of have, like, that love-hate relationship where it's like, you know, 
if I'm in the wrong, she has absolutely no filter and being like, yo, you're being stupid. But at the same time, it's like if she's in the wrong, I have no no like filter with being like, all right, no, it ain't gonna happen. But we'll still be friends afterwards. We know it's all love. We know it's all like just we want each other to be like the best human beings we can be. You know what I mean? Awesome. Um, so it was cool having her there because it was like a buildup of so many like just events of me just getting it into getting into it with people and then having her there just to kind of like calm me down and bring me back and be like, look, you're just mm. you're doing too much. And I'm like, am I? And she's like, yeah, like, calm down. I'm like, all right, my bad. But it's stressful, but fun. Seemed like it was stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I got to meet I, Laurel. Laurel's like an OG. So that was kind of cool. That was the first time I got to meet Laurel. And I, you know, I mean, I kind of looked up to her. Oh, so I was, yeah. I was a real world fan, you know, growing yeah. up, you know what I mean? And then seeing her like on the challenge and all stuff. So that was kind of cool meeting her. And then, um, and then meeting some of like the UK people, like Callum is super cool. Sam um, is super cool. Now I actually was just chopping it up with Niall um, on Instagram the other day. Um, you know, he was trying to give me some bodybuilder tips. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> oh, no, man, it's just, you know, you get to, I met some really good people. So it was, it was fun. That's cool, man. That's cool. And I know you were talking a little bit about it, but uh, how is your personal trading business going? Yeah, man. Like it was, it was going good, bro. Like I was making some connections. Like uh, I was partnering, uh, made like a little partnership with the cryo place out here in uh, McKinney, Texas. Mm. Um, like uh, I was doing the online thing. So I was doing like a lot of like more coaching and stuff like that. I was doing a personal training and then COVID hit and you know, bro, it's like, it's like a ghost town out here. You know, I live in McKinney, which is like a suburb. So small business is a very big part of the culture in our city, man. And it's just like you go over to this um, shopping center and dude, it's just like for lease, for lease, for lease, for lease. Everything is just like new, you know, lease this, lease this. It's like that was a business there. And COVID kind of hit me, too, because it's like, you know, people didn't want to train in person because, um, you know, hygiene and bacteria and then no one had the money because they were losing their jobs to do online so you know i took a big hit um i'm slowly getting back into it slowly getting my clients back but um i think the big thing this year is i'm actually going to put out a streetwear line um that i'm pretty excited about um nice. so it'd be like t-shirts and stuff like that like t-shirts tank tops it's geared a little bit more towards like fitness because i feel like there's like you know fitness people don't always want to wear you know fitness gear when they're out and about but they right. do want something that lets people know like i'm into fitness so i'm kind of getting like a streetwear brand together that um they can be fashionable but still promote their fitness at the same time so i think it'll be pretty dope you know is there a so, name yet what's that is there a name yet yeah so it's bbg apparel and then bbg stands for bodybuilder gang so um Oh I man, I was hoping, I was hoping it was like Black Zeus or something, man. Uh, man I, was yo, I thought about, I, bro, I, I thought open. about that, man. But I def, but but I mean, I really want, I really want the brand to like scale up and be something that pretty big, like Young yeah. and Reckless or something like that. And I didn't want to, you know, limit. I guess the marketability. I didn't want to limit it to be just people that only value me will buy the brand. I want it to be a very stapled real brand. For people to buy that could be in Tillys.com or it could be in JC Penney's or it could be, you know, uh, at a department store, Pack Sun or something like that. And it's just more of like, okay, I understand who created it. So I under have a better idea of, you know, what the brand's about mm -hmm. versus I'm buying this brand because I like this person. Because I right. might tweet something and people will hate me in tomorrow. And, you know, I don't want the brand to like go to shit for that. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, be looking out for that, guys. Man, I'll shoot y'all some stuff though. Like, I'll hit you up, bro, and I'll be uh, dope. get you guys a nice yeah, little definitely. care package and you know, so y'all can check it out. For Appreciate sure. that, man. Appreciate that, brother. Thank you so much. Um, uh, do you get any calls from cast members of the challenge to use you for training? Yeah, man, bro. Y'all know Nehemiah, uh, who ne Nehemiah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, he yeah. hit me up a while back. I sent him like a full, like, I think I sent him like a full, full, like. A full four week like write up, like everything to do day by day, whatever. And he had hit me up, like he had hit me up. I think he had hit me up a few months after I sent it to him. He's like, "Yeah, man, it worked, bro." He's like, 
he's like, I'm still using it, bro. He's like, it works for me. Um, and then um, Niall actually hits me up every once in a while. Um, um, Allie from X on the Beach. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, cast members hit me up. I, and a lot of people don't talk about Anastasia, but I mean, because she kind of just, you know, kind of exited the whole MTV scene. But um, even her. So like, yeah, no, cast members hit me up for Leroy. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I definitely get hit up. Nice, nice. I don't get nice. called for the challenge, but the challengers call me for workout tips. Oh my god! I like how that works. Hey, Very how do I get better at the challenge? Call Marlon. Are we gonna cast him? <laughs> Probably not. Keep it moving. Have a nice life. <laughs> like, yeah, it makes no sense. Ace, <laughs> hey, so I know, I know, I know you're an avid challenge watcher. As as we could tell tonight, we were talking about the talking about the current season. What we've asked every every person we've interviewed this, we have to ask you this. Who do you think is the most overrated and who do you think is the most underrated? Ooh, okay. People aren't going to like this, but I don't care. The most overrated challenger, I believe, is CT. Um, hey, all, all I'm going to say is this. Is all I'm going to say is this. Is CT has not been put in a position where he has adequately had to go against somebody that has the same amount of fight in them as he does. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. It's easy to put a wolf against a dog and then, and then the wolf wins, right? Yeah, okay. they, they seem like they're the same species, but one is just built differently than the other. That's right. He ain't, ain't been up against no other, like, dog fight wolves, right? He's been going against, you know. Well, besides you in the pool. Well, besides me in the pool, and you yeah. know what I mean, it's yeah. me. Then the, what? The only other guy I guess we could say was Fessy, and you know it was basically whatever, right? So I do think CT is a little overrated, but there's no really way to really even test that at this point because he's not in his prime anymore. You know what I mean? So that's true. That's true. Um, neither here nor there. I still think that he's a great competitor, but I do think he was a little overrated in his heyday as far as how great he was. Um. The most underrated right now, I was gonna say Rogan, but he caught he 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 proved himself. He finally came to the point of proving himself. Heck yeah, he did. I, I, I wouldn't. I don't think any. I don't think there's anybody that we can say is underrated. I would say someone who has um, potential but underperformed so far. I would say is Jay. I say Jay has the most potential to be really, really, really good, but just hasn't quite showed it yet. We got a glimpse of it. Okay. His rookie season, when he sent two people home, he wasn't afraid to talk his shit. He wasn't afraid, you know, of anybody in the house. So I think he has some a high bar of potential. We just I don't think we've quite seen it yet. Um, but everybody else, I don't. I mean, I don't think there's anybody that's too underrated that hasn't given us a reason to doubt their ability at some point. Who? Oh, we got we got a comment. Okay. What do you think when CT went against Leroy climbing the, that wall? Um. Wait, are we talking about today's episode? They're talking about today's episode. I I hope not. Me either. <laughs> I don't. I, I just don't. I don't know what that's referring to. I don't know if that's referring to free agents. It, probably. If, I didn't you could, if you could specify that, Stephen, and get back to yeah. us. My bad, hey, Stephen. Um, I, I didn't see free agents either. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Marlon, do you think that if it's Nani or Leroy, which one do you think underperformed the most? Where they didn't, they never got a challenge win. Leroy. Leroy. I love Leroy to death, bro. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love Leroy to death, but so do I. You know, I mean, after like the second swimming challenge, you probably should have figured that out. You know, uh, I'm not the best swimmer either. We saw my swimming skills on Rivals Two was absolutely trash. Okay, uh, but I do think that um, <laughs> that was that was terrible, man. I was like, bro, if y'all don't get this boat over here and get me out this damn water. Oh. Steven, uh, he, he, Steven, he never watched free agents, so he couldn't he couldn't help bad, you that one. I didn't watch free agents, bro. My bad. Um <clears throat> I, I think Leroy was probably one of the few people that that is just like, bro, we're all rooting for you, bro. We're all rooting for you to get a win, bro. Like we want like the cards to just 
magically fall in your, in your favor and get this win. But for some reason, like he just he always fell short, man. It just it just sucks because he's kind of like a big T. He's like the male version of Big T. We're all in your corner. You, know oh, I mean? you just, got, you just gotta go do it. You know, you just you gotta get it, man. Um, so you know. Yeah, Sucks I thought, he's retired. I guess he's retired now, but he's yeah. retired. I thought War of the Worlds too would have been his best chance. Uh, he just was on the wrong side of things. Yeah, what, yeah, bro. He had he had a really good chance that season, man. Really good chance. And 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 if he would have won that season, it would have been like, bro, you won against some people that we can really say like these are some real competitors. It's not like you just won a flop season. You know what I mean? You won a legitimate season, but. Don't bet against the GOAT. That's no. Jordan, man. Don't bet against him. When you it can't. comes to finals, bro, we you saw can't. what we saw what he did on dirt. Man you, landed wong on a right. parachute and still beat and Derek. Still just like, all right, yes, good. Indeed. Let's go. Like, uh, who's y'all? Like, pass, Terminator. I mean, <laughs> this is not this is not human. How are we supposed to beat this guy? He just re he just literally remade a new leg after falling out of a plane <laughs> and y'all think we're going to beat him in a final? No, right. it's not going to happen. Like, see this. Is, oh, dude, the dude is a freaking nature. This is Mar- a freaking nature. Mar- this is, this is why, this is why like with Jordan, it's just, I want to get him on interviews so bad. Just cause I could pick his brain on Mar- just being, just being in that, in that atmosphere after getting hurt. And then, Dealing with the whole Sarah and him thing on Battle of the X's too, just, right. it, it just it's just your guys' dynamic and your guys is how you guys went to so many eliminations and won. It was just it, oh man, oh man. It's a different. It's, like, it, it, it's funny because it's like it's a different mentality, right? And I try to, and it's hard to explain a person like Jordan to somebody because you know you have to to have that mentality. You have to lose a lot. Right. Because Mm -hmm. you can't rely on the instant gratification of a win. Right. So most people, they do things with this mindset of the instant gratification. The reason why people like Jordan the way they are is because they've been put in situations where they were expected to lose. They lose, but then they learn and they and they find a way to fight back. So now you put him against other people who crumble or get mentally weak off of a small amount of adversity. And they look at what he's doing and they're like, it's impossible. But it's just like, it's not. It's really possible. It's just that he's been in that position before and had to find a way to finish or he had to find a way to try and win after the fact. And when you put him in a situation like this, it seems superhuman, but to him, it's normal nature. And like, you know, I mean, and I have a glimpse of what he his mentality just from playing sports at such a high level. It's like. You're put in these situations where it's designed to break you. It's designed to break you. There, there is no way to win, but they put you in that position so you see what it feels like so that then you can adapt and adjust in that moment to keep going. Mm. And you can apply that to other things later. And it's like, you know, fourth quarter, you're tired as hell. You, you know what I mean? You got to do 10 more plays and you know what I mean? You just got to pull that energy and that mindset for somewhere else to keep going. It's the same with him. It, it, it's just a different. It's a different mentality. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, Daniel, you have anything else to say, you want to add to Marlon? No. No, nah, man. Just thanks for having me on, guys. I mean, you know, I, it's so weird, bro. You do one challenge, and I don't understand how I'm still relevant all these years <laughs> later to the challenge. Like, you're sphere, a beast. You're but, a beast. You know. Yeah. We mentioned I'm, I'm, that we were going to interview that you, and the first thing I, I get back was Black Zeus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I, dude. Like it's, it's I, 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 bro. Like it's just so crazy how like the MTV fan base, the challenge fan base, has just stuck with me, man. Because I haven't been very consistent as far as being in the forefront since Rivals Two. So it's just, you know, I guess like thank you, you know, and to you guys let me do the interview. Thank you to the fan base. Thank you to. I just don't know how I'm still relevant. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Listen, man, I I I, I was gonna I was gonna do because usually with uh, most of the uh, challenge guys, you can't DM them. So when I when I was able to catch you on a comment, man, it, it worked out great. It was, yeah. just, it was just lining the stars, and I'm like, perfect. All right, right? Cool. No, yeah, so, dude. Like I try to, 
I tr I try to be as uh, interactive with the fan base or you know the the bloggers, the vloggers, like the podcasters. I try to be as um, you know approachable as possible. Um, right. So yeah, no, thanks for having me on, guys. That's that's yeah. super dope. Great hey, combo. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Hey, hey man, man, really appreciate it. We're so thankful and. We're truly blessed to have you on, man. You're one of my favorites. You know, you only did a season. I still appreciate you, and and I, I'm pretty sure you'll see that if you watch the interview. Just how excited I was to be able to talk to you about everything that's going on in life and and in our nation and uh, the current season, the challenge, man. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, maybe maybe we can uh, re, uh, let's let's redo this after the season's done, so we can talk about the whole season. I for mean, sure, bro. Just I'll be able to recap, going. yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah bro, let me know, man. My DMs, yeah. look, bro. If I see you come across the DMs or whatever, bro, I'll definitely, definitely respond for sure. Appreciate, it, man. I mean, you can throw a little elbow to Jordan and say, "Hey, Jordan, answer the buzz's call." Right, we right, right, bro. Get them on. We love cool. to get on. They're not gonna come yeah. for you, like exactly. Just do the interview. Yeah. yeah. Nah, hey, dude, I, I, I let him know, bro. I let him know. I let him know. Yeah. I, I definitely appreciate shoot him a message with it. I can't guarantee so anything, but I will put in a good word. Fine. We appreciate it so much, Marlon, you yeah. coming on tonight, man. Thank you so much for taking your time and be with the buzz tonight. Thank you, brother. Really appreciate, appreciate it, guys. Yeah. All right, man. Guys, that was that was Marlon uh, from the Challenge, uh, Real World Portland. Great interview. I loved it so much. Daniel, any last words before we close this night out? All I got to say is MTV needs to make that call for next season. Get him on. So we can watch him beast uh, the rest of the contestants and win because he he is the man. Listen, season thirty seven. I'm telling you right now, it's season thirty seven. Fessy talking that game. Marlon needs to come on. Have you seen the man's videos? <laughs> Have you seen the workouts? He's still in our back right now, laughing because he knows it's true. We want a mech. This is what we want. Fans have been asking for Marlon for years, years. The vloggers, the bloggers, all that. He just told us that freaking current, uh, current challenge stars are asking for workout advice. What's I mean? What more do you need? I mean, it makes no sense to me at all whatsoever. This guy dominated in rivals too. He was in third place, almost got second place against Bananas and Frank. And the man went on uh, X on the beach and was fronting his front his muscles with people. And the dude still don't come on. You inviting people like Teresa and Anissa, who I love. I'm not dissing him, Daniel. I'm not dissing him. <laughs> but we're not going to get Marlon back. I mean, come on, man. Come Just, on. All you got to do is ask Leroy. That's all you got to do is ask him how he is in elimination. And he will tell you. How yeah. much of a beast he is! Just like well, he said early in the in the interview, he picked him up and he threw him down. You just didn't see it because it was uh, right, right off camera. But but wait, then he then he told us about a wrestling match before that, and he played the mental game with him. The man's not all brawn; he's got mental fortitude as well. I, so I, I just want to I just want to see so him. I just want to see him and Fessy after that uh, Facebook Live that Fessy did. Oh my God! Which was the best thing was Listen. the best thing was to see him do that, and then the next day see Devin go on live and go, "Yo, dude, you're going out of character, man." He was like, "No one is afraid of you." Nope. And, and now I just want to see him come on next season and and then have I, a Black <laughs> Zeus just uh, tear him up. I just want to see I, it elimination. Yo. I almost want to put it back on just his reactions right now are killing me <laughs> yeah. right now, dude. But I, I agree to you. Like, we're into this right now. I, I could talk about Marlon's Marlin's accolades and what he is as a person and how strong he is and this and that. But people just look at the dim picture of, of, a, of a character that they're portraying on the show. Marlon has all the attributes just like a Jordan does. Just because you see a guy with popping muscles and this and that doesn't mean he don't have this. I mean, that's the reason why half of these cats, like a Wes – and like all these dudes that you know were super strong, they started losing that muscle because they couldn't contain it during the final. Marlon is that guy that could probably contain it in a final. We we seen a glimpse of it when he was not even in his heyday. He's in his heyday now. Yeah, MTV it, needs to cast this cat, man. I don't get it. Bro. He's got the perfect Twitter handle. 
What more do you need? I mean, I don't get it, bro. If he can make the final at his worst, what do you think he's going to do now at at his best? Get it, bro. Preach it. Preach it, man. Preach it. I mean, if they ever, if they, I know we're going a bit over the time. If if they ever revisited, if they ever revisited, uh, just, just battle the seasons, let's just say. Yeah, and they put they put Portland on there. They bring back Riley. They bring back Jordan. They bring back Marlon. Whoever it is, or they even just do a, like a rivals four and just say, you know what, we're gonna put Jordan and Marlon back together. It doesn't matter. Whatever the format is, it would be stupid and it would be just so unfair if we saw a hall brawl with Marlon and Fessy, and it, it would just it would just knock the the ball out of the ballpark. Is that's what people want to see? We don't want to see people going up and trying to figure out a puzzle. We want to see people figure it out with Marlon and Fessy going head to head, or Marlon and CT, or Marlon and a Rogan, Marlon or a Corey, something like that. Because Marlon it, it, and Josh, Mar- uh, yeah. Josh would have a chance. He would cry before the match even started. No, 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 no. Let's UK, be real about it. The UK, Josh. UK, yeah. Josh. Oh yeah. So guys, we appreciate it. That's all of our time tonight. Um. We love the recap. Check out the interview when we uh, post it up. And uh, we appreciate Marlon so much for doing that tonight, man. I know he's going to – if you guys get a chance, I know he'll retweet it and he'll he'll do his thing on his Twitter handle. And, then and we'll keep, do our thing. And then Go keep ahead. a lookout and keep a lookout for his brand that, that will be coming yep. out. Support him. A great guy. He has that out. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll rock it. We'll rock yeah, it. Yeah. We'll rock it. So Keep a lookout definitely yeah. in the future for that. Definitely but, uh, good words. Good words. You guys, you guys have a nice night, and everybody enjoy. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We'll catch you guys later.